Elevate TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. Welcome, this is Encourage a Pastor. Tonight, we are so grateful to be back. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, like we always do Saturday night, we have a guest. Praise God, we're gonna introduce him very quickly. And we just want you to share the page for those on social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube. We're looking forward. And welcome all of you viewers on Elevate TV. This is Apostle David Juma. I'm so glad to come to you, praise God. Well, today we're gonna to talk about the pastor and international connections or what we call exposure, international exposure. You know, because many pastors and leaders and younger generation, they didn't want to go to every nation. We're going to be listening to somebody trotting the nations and going, preaching the gospel, living in a foreign land, but a Kenyan. And he has a lot of experience in ministry and these things. And we're going to look at some of those dynamics, praise God. Because some people, hey, they didn't want to go everywhere, but there's a cost and a price to pay in these travels, praise God. I have Bishop. Uh, Jackson Kingori, who I happen to have known in the 80s. He didn't know me that time. He was, has always been the front line in the gospel. And you're welcome, Bishop. Uh, thank you so much, Apostle. Yeah. It's my pleasure and my honor to be here today. And welcome back to Kenya. <laughs> thank you. Kenya is uh, home. This is home mm -hmm. and we bless God. I began hearing about you in the 80s. Yes. Preaching the gospel and doing the camps and preaching high school. Yes. Colleges and all that. That's it's right. a joy that I'm privileged to sit with you. It's my honor. And praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so our viewers will be listening to this servant of God as we delve into this issue of the pastor and the international uh, ministry, you know, and issues of exposure and travels and so forth. Well, uh, Bishop, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and your, you know, ministry family and let the Kenyans get to know who you are and our viewers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, once again, thank you so much for hosting me in this uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, church uh, facility. Mm. It's always a joy to connect with the uh, men of God and people that uh, you have labored with the ministry. Mm. Uh, my name is uh, Bishop Jackson Kingori. Uh, my last name is the Komi Wanjero. Ah, okay. I didn't know but that. Mo exactly. Most people know Jackson Kingori. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I basically was born in Nyeri, uh, Obaya. But I grew up in Nairobi, mm. so I see I, I I saw Nairobi come up completely. Oh, wow! <laughs> All the years you see. All the years. You've seen the changes. That's why I'm able to drive in the US. Mm. And I am able to drive here without any, any problem. Right. And uh, I'm married to Dr. Lucy Yeri Kingori, and we are blessed to have three wonderful children, uh, two boys, right, and one girl. Amen. And uh, we're also blessed to have a granddaughter. Oh, wow. That's good. Cool. Who, who will share the same birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's fine. So we're blessed. Amen. Um, as you mentioned earlier, we live in the U.S., mm. in the state of Texas. Uh, by the grace of God, we've been there now. This will be our 25th year. Oh, that's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. Uh, the way we went to America is quite interesting. Wow. Uh, because if I can, if I yeah. don't mind... Go ahead and, uh, and, and also your ministry in America, what you're doing is, yes, feel free. Thank you. Uh, before I went to the U.S., I was very involved with ministry here hmm. as an evangelist. Yes. And last year as an elder with the Driven's Church hmm. in Gong. Hmm. Uh, but uh, I was also in the corporate world. Right. I was working for the insurance industry. Hmm. And uh, that time, by God's grace, we had pretty much hit the peak of our career. Mm. And so when the idea of coming to America came into place, uh, it confused a lot of friends, yeah. even ourselves. Mm. Because people couldn't understand why are we going to America? Yeah, and leave all this ministry. And leave the ministry and leave all these, yeah. uh, you know, good jobs, good position and jobs and mm. benefits. Mm. But I remember very well that uh, on the day, I mean, uh, we had the farewell um, uh, party. Mm. Uh, Eva Jeswerimo, uh, Tesiwerimo mm. was our speaker. Yeah. And she came 
and she uh, prophesied over our going to the US. Wow. And she said words that I've never forgot. Mm. She said, uh, God is sending us to the US mm. as a Joseph wow. to the nation of Kenya. Mm. And she said clearly that for the first two years, life will be very difficult, <laughs> very difficult. Mm. But after two years, mm. the Lord will remember us Amen. like remember Joseph. Amen. And things will turn around for our good. Mm. But, I, but that to have happened, mm. I used to go to her crusades in Hull Park. Yeah, everybody used to. Yes. Mm. And what happened is that uh, God had, I mean, God has spoken through her. She didn't know me that time. Yeah. But God spoke to her through a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we had sold our vehicle for 500,000 that time. Yeah. And, uh, and she gave out of no, word of knowledge and said, there's a man here who works in the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. And the Lord wants you to be obedient and give your tithe. Wow. I was there by myself. My wife was at home. Mm. And during this time, we we're trying to sell our business, mm. our pharmacy, so that we can lease our first to go to the US. Mm. And, the, and what we we're getting were much lower than what we tend to sell. Mm. So I struggled to pay that 50,000. Yeah, it was a lot really, of money. It's re actually reducing what you got. Exactly. <laughs> But she repeated three times. Yeah. I said, God wanted to be, to be in obedience. Mm. And to cut those three shots, I pinifully took the check, loaned the amount. Mm. And she said, today before six o'clock, mm. the Lord you have done something to vindicate wow. his word. Amen. So I wrote that check. And not sure how I will explain this to my wife, mm. but I obeyed the Lord. <laughs> And so I gave the check mm. and when I went home, I was trying to get words, what, what, what do I tell my wife? Mm. But before I open my mouth, my wife meets me and says, guess what? Mm -hmm. I got a call. Wow. I said, what call? I got an offer of the pharmacy business mm -hmm. and this offer is 1.9 million. Wow. And we're getting 900. Wow. Can you see how good works? It's another extra million. Exactly. Extra 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 million. Yeah. So when she came during our farewell and she prophesied about that, I knew that God was behind our going. Amen. And so we packed and went to the U.S. Mm. And for two years, life was very difficult. Right. I must admit, really difficult. Mm. I regretted. I questioned God. <laughs> Why did you send us here? <laughs> exactly. And I actually, to be honest with you, I conspired to bring my family back without my wife knowing. Mm. My wife is very, very... Uh, uh, she's one of those people when they when they make when they make up their mind mm. she does not look backward right she stay focused she stay focused mm. and so i knew if i tell her she will sabotage <laughs> the don't, don't exactly. go back home. so i went and got the ticket mm -hmm. and i but before long she discovered that there's some tickets i'm seeing some money here exactly so she aborted <laughs> the whole program <laughs> and so we stayed in the u.s mm. and life was very difficult but after two years, if I can cut the whole story short, mm. according to the prophetic word that was given during our farewell, mm. things start put, coming back to ship. Amen. Like, like, the, like the prophecy of Ezekiel, mm. bone to bone. Bone to bone, began looking for each other. Exactly. In connections. By themselves. Amen. And so after two years, God started now giving us an elevation. Praise God. And, uh, and so we moved from Houston, went to Dallas, and I must say that uh, looking back, life has been good since that time. Amen. Uh, shortly after that, two years after that, we started the church. Right. Uh, which is called Neema Gospel Church. Neema Gospel Church. Yes. And I'm sure the Americans keep asking, what is that Neema? It was strategic. We, we used the word Neema. Right. Because we had an accent. Yeah. And every time we spoke, people, the Americans would say, excuse me, can you, can you interpret what you're saying? Yeah. So we decided we're going to have this word strategically so that uh, when you say Neema, they'll be curious to know what is Neema. Ah, I, I like that. And that will give us an opportunity to witness to them. Amen. And to, 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 let, to let them know who we are. Absolutely. So we call ourselves Neema Gospel Church. Yeah. And we started in 2003 in October. Mm. And uh, by the grace of God, the church has grown. Praise the Lord. Uh, I've heard about it, although I'm here in Kenya. Yes. I've heard about the Neema Gospel Church you know, in, in Texas, yes. God has really been so good. Amen. We have grown exponentially. Mm. Uh, we just managed uh, four year, five years ago mm -hmm. to
to buy our property, which was $3 million oh, wow. uh, in a four acre. Wow. So we have our, what we call our own, Your own property, our own property mm. with three buildings. Yes. Uh, the church has gone to ground. We are now doing about uh, 500 plus. Oh, wow. Praise God. We have two services, mm. but with the corona now, we are doing one service. Yeah, you're right. Because of but we're hoping to come back in full. Amen. Yes. Wow, what a story right there. <laughs> Our viewers, this is uh, Bishop Jackson. Uh, King Ori, we've known him over the years with Repentance Ministry, Commissioners for Christ, and now Nehemiah Gospel Church in America. It's a joy. Well, uh, Bishop, very many preachers in this country, mm. uh, they feel like going to America um, is like a, a very great experience. When they come back, you know, they feel they are in the next level. And like the guys who have stayed in Marigwene and they haven't gone nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know whether you have met them when they arrive in America. And uh, yeah. you are just looking at them and listening to them and you are telling yourself, I wish you know how to penetrate this nation and what it takes. Yeah. Make a few comments on this matter because we are beginning right there. <laughs> well, I think what, what I'd like to say on that is that uh, uh, don't make the mistake of coming to the U.S. without healing from God. Absolutely. I like that. Because that is critical. The what kept me, uh, what kept us together mm. is because of the prophetic word that was spoken over us. Amen. So that even when things went south, mm -hmm. we remember the Lord had said about us. Absolutely. Now the problem we have so many people who want to come to America mm. and they want to come to America because they hear others have prospered mm. or they have these, uh, wrong notion mm. that you come to america and you succeed mm. let me put away over here and say this mm -hmm. it is not the territory mm -hmm. it is the man it is the man and the calling of the anointed the grace amen praise god and if you are not successful here apostle you cannot be successful you cannot be successful in america <laughs> <laughs> we were successful here and you are now successful there and let me let, let, let me show you this one here uh -huh. When we went to the U.S. Mm -hmm. in 1994, mm -hmm. my my salary, mm -hmm. and I still keep my my my, my check uh -huh. or my pay slip. Pay slip, yeah. I was getting a hundred and fifty thousand every was, month. That was a lot of money in 1994. I'm t I, I still keep it. Wow. To remind me mm -hmm. that what God can did for that time, mm -hmm. He can do it today Praise and God. He can do it tomorrow. Praise so God. it's okay to come to America. Mm -hmm. But always ask yourself, mm. has the Lord spoken to you? Amen. And what is your mission? Mm. And what is your mission? Mm. What is your purpose? Mm. Because it's not just coming to America that you make you. Mm. You must have a, a vision. Mm -hmm. Because without a vision, mm. you will collide. You will actually perish. <laughs> you will perish. You will collide. Mm. There will be division. Mm. And you will be dislocated. Oh my goodness. Yes. And we have a lot of stories uh -huh. of so many Kenyans who came to America or even Europe. Yes. And today they don't have their families. Uh, they lost their jobs. They are doing taxi work and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I met one in uh, Florida, a taxi man. He told me, oh, from Kenya, what a blessing. You know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I have no papers here. And he was kind of bishop. You know, I can't leave. Yeah. I'm stuck here. Yeah. You, you are you're blessed you can come and go yeah i said yeah there must have been a history there yeah and there are so many of those things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i like what the bishop has just said our viewers and those who are watching us elevate tv god bless you keep uh, writing messages rare and interacting online the greatest thing he has said is that you need to hear from god mm -hmm. before you can decide to relocate to another nation you know i was given an opportunity in 1989 uh -huh. Uh -huh. by john austin Yes, in Houston. Yeah, mm -hmm. to come to the local wood uh, dome in the inauguration. Uh -huh. But I was naive. I said, no, I'm not going to America. Yes. I hear th people go there and do all kinds of stuff. They come here rich. They lie about this and that. Yes. This student home, this, that. Yes. I said, no, no, I'm not going. Yes. And then the following year also, I got invited again. I didn't go. Uh -huh. Only until 2003, the Lord told me, I want you to go. That's right. You know, I went to something else. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. Amen. So when you hear from God, yes. that makes the difference. Exactly. Talk about this idea of the pastor and the international ministry. Mm -hmm. I believe the driving force is a great commission mm -hmm. what jesus said mm -hmm. go to all the world mm -hmm. you know and i'm sure you are part of those who have been going since you you got your call in ministry mm -hmm. and uh, talk to the pastors because some of them actually need to have the 
the mission, the going mentality. Mm -hmm. It will add a lot of value mm -hmm. and exposure to them. Because one time I listened to DDJ who said, mm -hmm. anybody who's a pastor, a five-fold minister, preacher, is actually anointed. Mm -hmm. The difference is mm -hmm. the exposure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the kind of exposures people have. So the Great Commission and exposure and the men of God. Let's get into those, those kind of discussions. Uh, <clears throat> I'll share from my own experience. Right. And I'll say that uh, for who I am today, right from when I was growing up and I was in college and mm. I was in high school, mm. I've, always had a, I've always had a heartbeat for souls. Mm. And so even as I started the church, my starting the church was because I wanted to see lives transformed mm. i wanted to see souls come into the kingdom amen and i must say this apostle with all due respect mm. i did not i did not start the church as a way uh, as a source of income and like a business enterprise or a business enterprise right for the longest i, I was actually supplementing that's, or even supporting the ministry that's exactly what happened for the longest yeah so it is imperative and is important that uh, you have a heartbeat, you have a compassion mm. for souls. Mm. Because when you have a compassion for souls, the Lord will open doors for you. Mm. Because the Bible says that the harvest is ready, mm. but there are no workers or the workers are few. Mm. And when you have compassion for souls, God will open doors for you. Amen. So that compassion or that hunger, in it hunger for souls, mm is what you cause the Lord to open doors, whether to America, mm -hmm. whether to Australia. Mm -hmm. You see, everything is driven by motive. Why do you want to come to America? Why do you want to go to Europe? Mm -hmm. Is it money? Because if it's money, you can get it here. You can get it here, absolutely. You get the point? Yeah. But if the motive fits in God's kingdom agenda, Praise God. then God will make sure that uh, your desires will be granted. Mm -hmm. So for the young preachers, my advice is that, uh, uh, yes, there are benefits of serving the kingdom, mm. but your primary purpose must be the heartbeat for soul winning. Amen. Yes. Amen. And, uh, and that should not be mistaken with anything else. Mm. And, 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 and it's true, America needs uh, evangelists. Mm. America needs Africans. Mm. It needs Kenyans, right? Because people there are so uh, religious, mm. or even some of them are religious. Yeah, there's the depth that you find in Africa, you don't get in America. That's correct. So when you when you come to the U.S. or you come to another state, my prayer is that you keep that light burning, mm. because what happens is that when you most of our people when they come there and their lights are shining, mm. they get submerged by the wealth, by jobs, <laughs> by Dora, uh -huh. and they lose the purpose why they came to the U.S. Absolutely. And that's why, like you mentioned earlier, that uh, when people come there, they, you know, they do all kind of jobs. Mm. Uh, there is a bit of struggle, that's true. Yeah. But I believe that uh, a man whose feet is ordered of the Lord, mm. God would elect that person. Praise God such that you're not you don't sacrifice your family mm -hmm. you don't sacrifice your calling mm -hmm. you don't sacrifice your values mm -hmm. and you don't sacrifice your convictions praise god so i encourage everybody who's come to the u.s mm -hmm. because again i can't discourage you from coming no 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 it is important that you come mm -hmm. but as you come keep your faith praise god keep your faith amen do not compromise mm -hmm. keep the integrity mm -hmm. of the gospel amen just like in the book of matthew 6 that say that here that says seek ye first the kingdom of the God. Kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. When you seek the kingdom of God, then God will make sure that doors are open for you. Praise the Lord. This connection. Amen. So you can succeed in America when the kingdom of God is in you first. <laughs> in that nation. And you can also succeed in Kenya. And you also succeed in Kenya. Wow. Yeah. It's a blessing because when you keep the compassion mm -hmm. for souls, yes. the love for souls, yeah. you know, the vision to bring others into the kingdom yes and preach the gospel mm -hmm. that's the bottom line it is <clears throat> other things can follow oh they will other things can follow and will, mm -hmm. will, will actually follow mm -hmm. and uh well i guess exposure yes looking at what happens in international sector is that there are a lot of 
uh, opportunities for partnership in terms of getting people who are maybe older in the gospel, mm -hmm. people who have access to certain things mm -hmm. that somebody doesn't have, mm -hmm. access to education, access to books, mm -hmm. and that, you know, kind of, I mean, access to training, that kind of exposure, I think is helpful for a pastor, whether here or there. And I'm glad that even here now, you know, I had a desire when mm -hmm. I was younger mm -hmm. that I would want a scenario where when a pastor in Kenya feels he want to attend an international conference, mm -hmm. He can get it in Nairobi. He can, yes. And now it's happening. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Same quality, uh -huh. organization, planning, and the quality of depth and anointing. But talk it's, about partnership in the gospel yeah. internationally. What is the situation like? Because long time ago we used to hear, you know, you go there and you stumble on a muzungu and you finance you, but you realize the reality is different. So talk about those. Uh, dimensions of partnerships, you know, and opportunities. Of course, the pros and cons, opportunities and the assumptions and all those kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, the ground has shifted over time. Wow. The way the Mzungu would, was embracing missionaries, uh, particularly from Africa, mm. it has shifted over time. Yeah. Part of it has been to do with abuse. <laughs> of that opportunity. Yeah, but, uh, Secondly, also, uh, the resources are also becoming restricted even for them. Yeah. And the shift I'm talking about is that uh, I have seen in the recent years that uh, the African churches now in diaspora mm -hmm. have grown to maturity. Wow. Like Dallas, where we are. Mm -hmm. Six or seven churches have their own Property properties and buildings. That's amazing. Meaning that uh, uh, they are recognized. Mm. They are doing very well. Yeah. And I'm talking about churches whose membership is about 300 plus. Yeah. That's very uh, good. Exactly. America. Yes. That's very good. So the dependence that was on the Mzugu Church mm. is shifting, such that even say our African preachers, who you know, whether from South Africa mm. or from Kenya, whatever it is, mm. uh, there is a desire to connect their own. Mm. Because we have the message for the Americans. Wow. We have the message for the Americans. Mm. And although there is a big divide between the 11 hour, it's a, it should be the most divided hour mm. in the US mm. because of our, of our culture. Mm. Uh, and I understand that. Before that, I couldn't understand. Mm. But I understand why Amzungu feels comfortable to worship in their own church mm. and why an African feels comfortable to worship in their own church. Mm. It's not because we don't like each other, mm. but much of it has to do with the culture. Yeah. It doesn't mean they're not spiritual, mm. but it's just connectivity. Mm. Uh, so there's a lot of shift that's happening in Apostle. Yeah, that shift is important for people to know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Diaspora Church now has mm. gotten to a point whereby it has gone through the pains of maturity. Mm. Uh, to a point whereby I can say most churches now in the U.S. Mm. are quite stable. Of course, they have a few bickling here and there, mm. uh, a few you know challenges like in, in our place. Mm. But most of the churches that I deal with are these uh, diaspora churches. Right. We also have a big network of other churches. Like I'm the chairman of the DFW, which is Dallas for Twelve mm -hmm. Pastors Association. Oh wow! That brings all the you know churches together, mm. and uh, uh, and f through that network, I'm able to hear opportunities mm. that are there. Mm. But let me say this: there are enormous opportunities in the U.S. Mm. even for young preachers mm. to e get equipped. Mm -hmm to get to learn from great men and women of mm. experience. Mm. But don't wait until you come to the U.S. to get that skill no. or that experience. No. Start gathering it from the fathers that are here. Absolutely. Start gathering from men and women that have been proven in the ministry. Mm. So that what you come to gain is an addition mm. as opposed to going to get a new. Absolutely. If you come to get a new, you get more confused. <laughs> <laughs> because you have no, your yeah. foundation is not solidified. Absolutely. You get the point? Yeah. But there are enormous opportunity, academic opportunities. Yeah. And I actually would encourage every preacher that is important even, no matter how much anointed you are, mm. you need to get structure. Mm. And education is one area that gives you structure mm. of order mm. and strategic planning, mm -hmm. which is very important. Yeah. So don't just depend on writing. Mm. Get some formal education right. that can help you to get to open, uh, your doors be opened mm. or be connected. Praise God. And, and I thank God now that we have uh, great colleges in this country. Yeah, absolutely. Theological colleges mm. that are offering great, great uh, curriculum. Mm. 
uh, even churches, mm. even churches for that matter. Mm. So I would encourage all young preachers to get yourself, to do something, mm. get the basics, mm. get the, you know, whether it is a bachelor level education, mm. because that will help you to, to get to certain levels mm. that you cannot get if you don't have it. Praise the Lord. And I think for me, that is what has helped me, helped me a lot, mm. even as I lead the church. Mm. There's a lot of corporate experience and knowledge mm. that I picked over the years mm. that have helped me to navigate our church. Absolutely. For example, accountability. Mm. I learned long ago yeah. that you got to be accountable. You got to be transparent. Mm. In the U.S., you can't play allowed with money. No, no. You they can't jail you. Oh, they'll put you in jail. <laughs> they'll put you in jail. <laughs> put you in jail. <laughs> Some of you pastors here have escaped, uh, but uh, it's catching up. Yes. It's catching up with us right here. Exactly. Accountability. Yeah. Go Accountability ahead. is important. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important. Yeah. Uh, of course, not even not forgetting integrity. Yeah. The integrity is also important. Mm. And, I, and you mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, people uh, going to US and leaving their families here. Mm. If you allow me, I would like to say this. Yeah. As a minister of the gospel mm. and as a Kenyan, mm. I would really discourage women or men who come to America and forget their families. Mm. I would actually say this, it's okay to come to the U.S., mm. but give yourself either three months mm. or six months mm. to bring your family. Yeah. If your family is not coming to the U.S., mm. do not sacrifice your family at the altar of Doras or at the altar of America. This is something we must say very loudly. Extremely loud. Mm. Because I have, my heart has been broken to see hundreds of families, mm. children, spouses, mm that have gone separate ways because one person is in America. Mm -hmm. And when they come back together after 10 or 15 years, dynamics have changed. They are strangers to each other. They're strangers to each other. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to give yourself three months mm -hmm. or six months to settle down mm -hmm. and bring your family. If they can't come back, America is not heaven. Absolutely. <laughs> I have a friend of mine yeah. from Uganda who told me, David, you might go to America even three months. Yes. We'll get an air ticket and get you back here. Exactly. <laughs> and that's my policy. Yeah. Usually, if you are going on a mission, go for a mission. Exactly. Do what you must do and mm -hmm. get back home. Mm -hmm. But if you're planning to relocate there, mm -hmm. then let the Lord guide you. Exactly. Let the Lord organize everything. Exactly. For the family and so forth. Exactly. The matter of the family, man yes. of God, is yes. something we need to talk about yes. after the, the short break uh -huh. because that's major for the mission because mm -hmm. when you look at the dynamics and the exposure of international mm -hmm. ministry mm -hmm. first we say of mm -hmm. course the great commission passion for films yes and then we came up to the other issues of opportunities yes and so forth we came yeah. up to issues of uh levels of accountability governance they need to be trained know yes. some of the things yes the family is very important very important and we've seen how many people have suffered mm -hmm. i have actually been involved in praying for two of them mm -hmm. one of them was stuck in seattle for nine years so I yep. prayed and I called him back home and he came home. Thank God he had, he, he, he had you. He, he had yes. he had me in the spirit. Yes, exactly. And, uh, yeah. and I'm sure you are on the other hand yes. uprooting some. Oh, we pray them out. <laughs> we pray them out. <laughs> some of them are very deep rooted, but uh, we're still praying them out. <laughs> we're still uprooting them. <laughs> exactly. For the sake of family. Yes. Because it's important for ministry. Amen. Wow. Our viewers, this is encourage a pastor. We're still talking about the pastor and some of the things international and exposure and the things that, you know, show up. We have Bishop Jackson Kingori with us here from uh, Texas. Is a blessing so we're gonna go to a short break when we come back we're gonna continue with these matters because they are important because hey we have opportunities to travel but there are certain dynamics Amen. we must take care of so take the break we'll be back shortly in the little God will entrust you with much so that little don't look down upon it mm. just do it and God will continue raising you up slowly from glory to glory from faith to faith
I'm very passionate about voice. Clearly, we yes, can see yes, it. Yes, yes, and, and rehabilitating people's yeah. voices because I've had about people's vocal issues for too long. Mm. So what are you going to do about it? Ding, ding, ding. Welcome back, and Carisha Pastor is here with us. Praise God. Before the break, uh, Bishop Jackson Kingori is here from Texas, America. We're talking about uh, the pastor and the international dimension of ministry and a lot of dynamics, Bishop. Yes. Particularly the issue of men of God going to America. It's an opportunity, of course, to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. Europe and other places. But the issue of the family. Mm -hmm. Because even when I travel, I must remember that I have a wife and children. Mm -hmm. How long do I go? Mm -hmm. What will they be eating when I'm away? Mm -hmm. And so forth. Mm -hmm. And in America, I'm sure you have all these dramatic experiences. You become like the chief. No wonder you are doing pastoral work. Because yeah. you have to pastor most of these people and give them guidance. Yeah. And we need to guide and give certain principles mm -hmm. and counsel on matter of how does a minister handle the family. And especially if you are traveling. Because you have seen it all in America. Yeah. Um, again, it's a, it's a very delicate and difficult uh, subject because there is the family and the economic needs yeah. that need to be balanced. Right. But I personally believe that uh, family should uh, override any economic provision. Yeah. Now, the problem we have is people leaving their families in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not so much the other way around, leaving them in the US. Yeah, it's actually leaving them here in Kenya. Leaving them here in Kenya in Africa. Yeah. And coming to America for green pastures. Mm. And that's okay we understand. Yeah. But you have to ask yourself the question that I say, do you want to sacrifice your family for money? Mm. Because when you come to the US, whether you're a minister or not, mm. and your family is not there. You put yourself on a pedestal of temptation. Mm. And I have seen many, many, many ministers who are zealous for God. Mm. They come to the U.S. And because their family, their spouses are not there, mm. they end up compromising the very call mm. and the very integrity mm. of the ministry. Right. And there are so many of them. Mm. I'm talking about ministers. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. Mm such that they, they no more bear the name in fact if you meet them and you say you preach in a lobby yeah, yeah i used to know you <laughs> you hide away oh my so i would i would strongly go back again and say that uh, uh give yourself time mm. i believe god is a god of speci specificity mm. and god also answers according to our desires mm. if he's the one who opened the door go to the us mm. he must have had your family in mind absolutely so if you're there indefinite mm. and your wife or your husband is suffering mm. i don't see god there unfortunate apostle yeah i think it's a, a dimension of uh i don't know what to call it but you know ministry i think the way ministry was presented in this nation ministry was lifted above family you hear god mm. he has given you a call mm. Given you an anointing, go for it. It's like family come to the periphery. After years now, we can tell you that from God mm -hmm. is actually your family. Mm -hmm. And all the other things you do, ministry or marketplace uh, operations and so forth, come in later. But family is important. Even Abraham, when he was caught, yeah. he, didn't leave his, he did not leave Sarah behind. <laughs> no, he went with her. He went at every place went with her. <laughs> <laughs> Even Jacob. Even Jacob, he didn't he? leave his wife with his uncle. No, no, no. He went with them. Mm. So I think it's important, I think, take time and uh, ask the same God who opened the door mm. to make provision and to open the door for your spouse. Right. But I also want to give a waiver and say that there are also great, wonderful brothers and sisters who come there mm. and they have left their wives there, but they've come there with a specific goal that I'm here for one year, mm. two years. Mm -hmm. After that, I'm going back. Right. 
I have no problem with that. I have, yeah. The problem is those who come there indefinite. Right. Three years become five years. Yeah. Become ten years. Yeah. Even the visa, Lily. There and the no, visa expires. There is no indefinite visa. There's no indefinite visa. No indefinite visa. Yeah. You are given a specific assignment. Exactly. A specific period of time. Exactly. And then you begin exactly. shifting and changing things. And if you come and you have no family there, hmm. I would also encourage you hide yourself in church. That's that's powerful. Get involved with the ministry right actively yeah but when you disappear in the thin air <laughs> of the world oh my you get messed up completely completely and as i said before for in the in the course of my ministry mm. the the saddest and the most difficult uh part of my ministry is when i have to bring somebody in a coffin yeah. who left his children here or mm -hmm. her children here mm -hmm for those years mm -hmm. and now you die in america mm -hmm. and i'm coming to bury you and your kids are seeing you in the coffin and that is the most heartbreaking part of my ministry yeah because they remember they saw their father or their mother many years ago exactly and now they are seeing him or her in a coffin exactly it must be very painful exactly and so i think i hear you bishop uh in america what you are sharing is very important mm. and i'm glad not only those of us here in africa but those of you in america that are hearing the bishop through the social media platforms it is something that we must begin to have a prayer meeting about and serious counseling and saying brother what can we do for you sister what can we do for you mm -hmm. brother what can we do for you yep. so that people can uh, reorder their families. Reorder their families. Yes. Reorder their that's families. That's what it is. Yes. I think that's 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 what it is. Reordering yes. the family. Exactly. In the international arena. Exactly. Because it's a major major issue. It is a major issue. Praise God. Major issue. Yes. And of course, if you find opportunities there, that's great. But please, family is important. And so Bishop is praying on the other side, uprooting me. I'm praying on this other side, calling them. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So let's agree so that we don't have to have these prayers putting you right in the middle and you're stuck <laughs> exactly but god is a god of plan and purpose amen and that's a great blessing glory to god so go ahead and uh, share the page for those who just came in uh, and go ahead at the same time do the comments on on uh, the numbers that are appearing on the screen and those on facebook and youtube it will be a blessing to interact as we discuss the pastor and these opportunities to travel and take the gospel but the family is very important can I say something I yes please go our but, church has started uh, a partnership program mm -hmm. where we are trying to partner uh children that were left here wow and their parents are in the u.s wow and every time i come i come with about 10 or 15 kids that parents have connected me with the, them here wow to cut and i have a meeting with them i have a dinner i make a dinner with them wow just to kind of feel the experience mm. and take that experience to their parents back to the u.s so the parents there yes. give you the contacts of their kids here. Exactly. Then you gather the kids here. And you gather the kids here together. Oh my. I have a dinner with them. Wow. I hear their frustrations. Yeah. And I'm able to go and I go back to the US. I'm able to meet their parents. Yeah. And I am able to tell them their first hard information mm. on how their children are doing. Wow. Yeah. This is a very unique ministry. Yeah. I mean, this is unbelievable. Mm. This is uh, uh, something very powerfully, you know, um, I mean, it touches my heart very much to see how children would have their parents very far away and let it be for a short time. We're not saying that Lily, no, it's okay. should, yeah. but let it be for a short time. Exactly, every time, yes. Praise God. Mm. Well, uh, how about Bishop internationally, the whole issue of cultural changes and uh, in Bible schools, I will teach you about cross-cultural missions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to hear some of the challenges because here is a, a Kikuyu man from Nyeri preaching in America and uh, halfway through they will not even hear what did you say <laughs> <laughs> and how a pastor and a minister should prepare themselves and uh, some of the stories and uh, some of the experiences because i tell you what without preparation yeah you will be speaking to yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm laughing because you know i come from yari <laughs> and uh, i have you know i have a very heavy accent yeah uh, like I was not taught between the, the difference between R and yeah, L, absolutely, <laughs> and C and S. Yeah, and, and so I would fumble everywhere. Yeah, and and uh, but knowing what I know now, yes, my encouragement or my word of advice is that uh, try to accumulate yourself. Mm. Particularly when you know, like I went to college, I went to college in England. Mm. That was the first shock that I had. Yeah. So by the time I went to America, I at least I had done a bit of. Uh, uh work on myself yes particularly in terms of language mm. 
uh, in terms of um, cash or manalism. Mm -hmm. Because this can be a shock. They can actually close doors that are supposed to be opened. That, that's correct. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because of those cultural differences. Yeah. So my advice is that uh, if you get the opportunity to go to uh, whether Europe or, or in America, uh, try to understand the, 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 the dynamics of where you're going. Mm. Uh, and even try to educate yourself mm. on some of the major differences. Mm. The pronunciation of words. That's correct. It helps you to open great doors mm. or to make people comfortable or at ease mm. when you converse with them. That's correct. Uh, the other thing is what I would call as casual mannerism. Mm. And wh what I mean by that is that uh, uh, the way things are done here are a bit different from the way you do there. <laughs> this is different. And I'll give a good example. <laughs> Uh, some, as a man, we, here in Africa, we have this called martial men. Mm -hmm. There are things I can't do. Yeah, of course, you're a man. How can you do that? Exactly. How can you go to the kitchen and washing dishes? Exactly. Uh -huh. Or I can't change diapers for my uh -huh. children. Uh -huh. Or I can't cook or I can't wash. I can't make the bed. Uh -huh. Now, those are things you've got to uh, be, be prepared to sacrifice. Right. Because when, well, first of all, when you go to the U.S., yeah. the woman become empowered. Nobody will do those things for you. Nobody will do those for you. Yeah. And yeah. and everybody knows their rights. Yeah. And I must admit here, unfortunate, sorry to say, yeah. in the U.S., the man comes maybe number three. Mm -hmm. the, the woman comes number one. Mm -hmm. Or the, actually, the children come number one in okay. terms of protected by the law. And then the mothers. Then the mothers. Mm -hmm. The fathers come number three. Actually, probably number Maybe even dogs. I mean, animals are treated better than men. Wow. That's a reality. Wow. That's the reality. Yeah. So you, when you come to, to America as a man, mm. be prepared to make adjustments, mm. to train yourself mm. and change, uh, have a mind transformation mm. and tell yourself you're no more in Kenya, <laughs> where I cannot wake up and cook breakfast for my children, mm. where I cannot uh, uh, do the laundry mm -hmm. for my family. Mm -hmm. I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop. Mm. It's my pleasure to do laundry for my family. And I do it. Absolutely. And I, and I fold the clothes. Mm -hmm. I make, if I'm the last one to do the bed, mm -hmm. I make the bed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost me or make me less of a man. Right. In fact, it's more of a joy mm -hmm. that I'm serving my family. Right. In whatever capacity I am. Mm. So that, that might change is very important. Because I've seen whereby families are always squabbling and, and they're in conflict. Mm. Because, and I'm saying this for the men, because men are the most difficult to change. Mm. <laughs> we are the most difficult to change. So you have all these conflicts happening. Yeah. Because the man is not willing to change. Right. Or even say, for example, jobs. Mm -hmm. There are jobs that uh, we, once you get to the U.S., mm -hmm. don't look at the, the level of your education initially. No, no. Because you're trying to set up to make adjustments. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you this. Even the study that I made, mm -hmm. when I went to the U.S. apostle, mm -hmm. you know what happened? Mm -hmm. The first job that I got mm -hmm. was clean toilets. Can you imagine? And I was a, I'm a general manager here. Can imagine. But I made sure I never communicated what I was doing here. No, you could not tell the Kenyans <laughs> what you are doing out there. You get the point? Yeah. But I did it because I had to make to bring money for the family. Absolutely. Then I I swept, I did other things, odd mm. jobs. Mm. So I'm trying to bring that to perspect, into perspective so that uh, to help you to understand that when you go to a foreign country, realize that's not your new country. Mm. So be prepared to pay a sacrifice of adjustments mm. until you get to the system. Absolutely. Or until you get where you are. Mm. So language is important. Yeah. Uh, work ethics is important. Mm. Uh, Manalism is also important. Mm. Uh, because if you can't do that, then you'll be very frustrated. Especially the work ethics and issues of time. One yes. of them is time. Eh? Time, yes. Time, the African time and the European time and the American time. Those are strange <laughs> perils. <laughs> I get frustrated all the time. We when you say, let's meet at nine. Here, here we have extra time, we can export it if it was gold. <laughs> we'll be very rich. And that's a mistake. Uh, yeah. Because God has given all of us 24 hours per day. <laughs> Everybody, whether in Africa or in Kenya, yeah. you have 24 hours. Yeah. And I must say that uh, I think there is a high level of stewardship mm. of time in the Western world mm. than here. That's true. And if anybody's going to do international ministry, even from here, yes. you got to be a timekeeper. You got to be a timekeeper. A good steward. Exactly. Time, yes. Exactly. So you see a lot of dramatic stuff. Oh, I see a lot of dramatic stuff. <laughs> I said, like our church, uh, our service starts 10 30. Mm -hmm. Whether there are three or four people, the service are starting. We start. We don't have to wait for people. We are not, uh, what can I say? We are not event driven. Mm. 
we are time driven. Praise God. And I think that's important also keeping time mm. because uh, people feel disrespected when they don't keep time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure when, with the Africans uh, coming to an African church, you're studying at 10.30, yeah. you're coming at 11. Some of them will try to come a little bit 11 before they shift and they adjust the time, right? And when it's a Zulu church, by no, 10 no, no, I mean, even US. Yeah. I mean, whether it's an Africa, of course, I mean, with the time, once you rub shoulders with these people, yeah, you yeah. have no choice but to, to keep time. To keep time. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we have a few churches that are still practicing the traditionalism of Africa, <laughs> but most of them have, a, have caught up with time. They have caught up with time. Yeah. I'm glad that here we, we do our services in time. Yeah, it it's important. Matter, it doesn't matter how many people are in, yeah. we've trained our people. Exactly. Because I think the leader yes. keeps time. So that's the leader right. determines exactly whether they keep time yeah. or not keep the time. That's correct. Exactly. And this is amazing, pastors, listen, you got to know though you are praying and trusting God to go to the next level mm -hmm. that next level you hear about yeah will require a lot of adjustment yes because there are places you can operate if you don't keep time no and, and even preaching uh, yes. here we preach two hours right <laughs> and uh, then there is 35 minutes 45 minutes uh, whatever and you're just saying i have uh, brethren hold on i i finish <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i mean people don't i mean People don't have the luxury of listening, you know, indefinite. <laughs> and and, and I'm sorry, sorry. In in American churches, if you go build a certain time, yeah, they work out. Yeah, they are they are done with you. Yeah, even in school. Yeah. If a lecturer comes and he's going on build time, people just work out, because oh. because they are driven by time. Mm. Uh, I, I think it's also good to balance because sometimes also you can you can be so much controlled by time, at the expense of anointing. That's correct. So that balance is important. So how do you guys do it uh, in Emma Church, for instance? I mean, uh, we, ha we have a grace, not more than 15 minutes. Okay. okay. Not more than 15 minutes. Yeah. And then what happens is that if we realize or feel that uh, God is speaking, or, you know, uh, as a certain direction concerning mm. a certain theme, mm. we'll create another meeting. Okay. But keep the time for the people. Okay. And the reason I pause is because uh, people have different shifts of job. Yeah, they are going to work. Some are going to work. Yeah. Others are going to be kids. Mm. And I think the biggest problem is also children. Mm. Because when the children come to study school, yeah. the way they are programmed in school mm. is the way they are in church. In church, that's good. So if they are kept for one hour yeah. and you're keeping them for two hours, no, 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 it's not they become hard. unruly. Absolutely. So you have to work within the time constraints that are there. Mm. And I can, I can also say that... that uh, uh, a, a one hour message is you, adequate. you have is adequate to have delivered whatever you are whatever god had put in your heart absolutely exactly if in the first 20 minutes you haven't said nothing then i think you are not ready and don't repeat, don't be repetitive yeah yes you're saying a lot of hallelujahs <laughs> exactly the glories exactly well do you know actually covid 19 mm. did help the churches in this part of the world uh -huh. to keep time yes we were given 90 minutes uh -huh. in fact initially it was 60 60 minutes which was one hour yes service yes and we did it I yeah, mean, exactly. two, three, four songs, uh -huh. 25 minutes, 30 minutes preaching, no announcements. Exactly. No more wasting time with announcements. Can you imagine? Uh, announcements disappeared. And then you ask yourself, why what were we, we taking doing? four hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, here we're talking to uh, Bishop uh, uh, Jackson Kingoli. This is a blessing. The experiences of being in the diaspora and so forth, it's important to hear how uh, a pastor get exposed to this kind of stuff. Uh, one other thing is, uh, of course, the the aspects of investments. Uh -huh. You know, um, we've seen a lot of Kenyans out there, uh -huh. ministers, mm -hmm. beginning to invest back in Kenya. Yeah. And uh, because when you, you when you, you 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 have the calling of God, you need to be a steward, not yeah. only of time mm -hmm. but also resources. Yes. And you can talk about some of those things. I'm sure you're dealing with them, encouraging people to invest back in Kenya or invest where they are and so forth, though they are in the gospel. They need to invest because in the 80s and 90s when we preached mm. you know that uh, money was never an issue we were not even being given money after preaching mm. there was nothing like investment nobody cared about things of this world mm. we only focused on the gospel mm. so uh but things have changed uh, yeah. you know uh encourage our pastors on investment because we have a future to take care of thank you thank you for that uh, uh for that uh, uh topic it's very important mm. it's so dear to my heart yeah and I believe in my heart, the Bible says that a, uh, a good father leaves an inheritance yes. for his children, his children. Right. 
And, and so I strongly believe that uh, it's important that uh, every preacher, mm. that you have a profile or you have a way of investing. In fact, it's biblical. It's biblical, of course. Biblical. Yeah. yeah. You have a way of living, not consuming what you are making. Mm. And so in the U.S., I have been instrumental in mobilizing pastors mm. in trying to invest. Mm. Uh, some will desire to invest in the U.S., particularly mm. generations that are younger than us. Yeah, you're right. Because some of them will never come back. Yeah, they'll never come back. They have no roots. They have no roots, yes, much. exactly. Mm. But some of us, uh, even if we're going to be there, mm. we still love Kenya. Yeah. And East, West, home is home. Home is always the best. Exactly. Yeah. So we do have these uh, opportunities of investments. Mm. For example, let me give a good example. My staff, mm. I had to encourage them to start investing their pension here. Wow. Through Britain. Mm. And the reason I did that is because the, the rate of return, the yield is higher here than, than the US. Yeah. Because in the US, they're giving you one to 2% mm. interest. Mm. Here you get about nine, mm. eight, nine percent interest. Mm. So you have a better way of investing your money here mm. Mm. than in the US. Second, the other thing is that I encourage them is because if you invest there and say you have a challenge, financial need, mm. you will go quickly and liquidate it. Yeah. But if it's here, you don't have access. To the tre I mean the uh, the luxury oh, of just of getting the money from here <laughs> to the US. The other way we also encourage people is also to invest in land. In that, yes. Yeah, to have some proper, some uh, some real estate property mm -hmm. that you can be able to, because things change. Yeah, we went through a time whereby, during the Trump administration, yeah, many people are being deported. Yeah, and you can have all the papers. Yeah, but you make you just you know make a bladder or maybe something happens, mm. and then you get deported. Yeah, and you have nowhere. To and go. you have nowhere to go. So I encourage Kenyans who are in the U.S. that are watching me. Mm that uh, do what you can mm. uh, to scatter your resources. Mm. Yeah, do what you can to scatter your resources. And more so here because uh, most of our siblings are here. Absolutely. And families are here. I actually see some of the um, data, statistics mm. showing the billions of money, of money that yes. came from, uh, you know, the diaspora. Yes. It's a lot of money. And I think Kenyans are very good in this. And the preachers and ministers of the gospel must not be left behind. Uh, by the way, I, I, I should have mentioned that apart from preaching, I also represent the cooperative bank oh. and equity bank in the U.S. Oh, wow. That's so I, helped to, I have helped thousands of Kenyans wow. to open accounts there and even buy houses and property. Oh, that's great. And that has been a great part of uh, you know, ministry to most uh, Kenyans mm. to be able to buy property mm. or to buy shares. Mm. Uh, or even maybe to open accounts. Mm. So uh, I uh, I know what you're talking about. All the money coming here. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Wow. Why? Because the minister, the pastor, the fivefold minister, no matter how much anointing you got. Yes. You have children to feed. You have a future to take care of, and you have uh, great grandchildren. And a man of God's yes. apostle. Yeah must always strive to have more than one source of one one source of stream of income yeah uh, personally i believe absolutely you need at least five yes sources of income mm. or streams of income right and it's also biblical you can go into that but don't tell <laughs> <laughs> and you know yeah. i think one of the greatest challenges is educating the man of god yeah on how to go about creating these streams yes you could say a couple of things there you know what does a man of God do uh -huh. with this little offering uh -huh. that, and the little pay he gets from the church uh -huh. to expand it? Of course, biblically, if you have a seed, yes. you can create a whole forest. But a couple of thoughts on mm. how a man of God can uh, get into these uh, investments. You know, one of one one of them I would recommend is teamwork. Teamwork. Uh, teamwork is very important. Mm. Um, even as you get, how, however little you get, or mm. however much you get. Mm there is the strength in numbers good and that is what chamas have redone in this country to change the lives of so many people right so as you t as if you team up with people who are close to you mm. whether you are 10 mm. like for example in our church mm -hmm. we have several chamas that goes out mm. 
and uh, my wife and I are part of it. Mm. We give every month maybe 500 or you know a thousand. Mm. And so after th three months, we get maybe 10,000. Mm. No, that money can help you to do something. Absolutely. So I would encourage preachers, uh, however little it is, to try to, to team up. To team work, oh, yes. I like that. Exactly. Principle, yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm. The other way you can also is uh, look for small, scale, I mean, proportionate depending on your income, mm. opportunities that you can be able to invest. Right. However small it is. Mm. The other thing I can, I would also recommend to many ministers because many pastors and ministers are gifted differently yes know the grace that you operate maximumly mm. mm. and structure it and package it did you hear that that's very powerful yes the yeah. grace that you are gifted mm. or that you operate mm. and structure it and package it and package it amen once you structure and package it mm. you'll be amazed how many people are needing it mm. But until it is packaged and structured, right. it will not help you. That's correct. Like doing a book. Like doing a book. And your magazines. Or, or a magazine. All those kind of stuff. That exactly. They go at a certain cost. Exactly. Or maybe you'll be passionate for children. Maybe, you know, a charity. Children. Yes. Don't just, just you know, I have a children's home. Mm. Structure. Let's see what you have. Mm. Brad it. Mm. So that as you talk to me, like I went to see, you know, a, a home in Dadora mm. yesterday. Mm. We support that uh, pass is a pass a celebrity pass mm. center. Mm. We support from the US. Yeah. I've not been there. Yeah. So I took a trip yesterday. She mm. didn't even know. Mm. And I was telling her that uh, you need to have a profile for these children so mm. that if I come here, mm. I need to know how many children are you helping, mm. and what are their names and what are their challenges. Absolutely. Because there may be one child, say, with a condition that can touch a mother with a, ch a similar child in the U.S. Mm. that won't specifically set their target of that child. Mm. So that is important. That mm. kind of knowledge is important. Amen. Yes. Wow. Glory to God. We almost come into the close of this program, you know, just exposing the man of God to some of the opportunities and how do you do international travels and ministries? How do you behave? You know, some of the cultures there, some of the shifts and so forth. And Bishop, you've been such a blessing. Thank you. And uh, we thank God for your exposure you. and experience and so forth. So we consider a parting shot as we come into a close of this encourage a pastor. Uh, there are many men of God that were affected by COVID. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of us were. Yes. But anyhow, we are still moving on. Amen. Please, uh, your parting shot for any of our listeners, uh, whatever the Lord puts in your heart as a conclusion. Uh, let, let me address to uh, the effects of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I want to address uh, this, uh, this uh, issue to some of us who are blessed than others. Mm -hmm. I'm tr I think there's a script in the Bible whereby uh, a man of God hid about a hundred men of God in the cave. Mm. I don't get his name. His, uh, Obadiah. Obadiah. Mm. He hid them during a time of trouble. Mm. And he fed them. He fed them. So I want to challenge some of our ministers and bishops that are endowed mm. and a bit, and a bit uh, more blessed than others. Mm. That we don't forget our small brothers. Mm. Or like the Bible says, our sister whose breasts are coming out. Mm. Let's not forget them during this time. Mm. Because some of them carry a great anointing. Mm. But because of the devastation of the COVID, mm. they are under the water. Yeah. So if there's anything we can do, Apostle, wow. and try to lally, because we can afford to give whether it's a thousand, it doesn't cost mm. much. Yeah, not much. And we can keep that reserve and help those pastors. Like I saw in a crew being helped. Mm. So that's one thing I would request. Amen. The other thing I would also request to pastors and ministers is that uh, uh, don't give up. Mm. Don't give up. No matter the ups and the downs. Mm. Uh, your faithfulness in the little mm. is what God is interested. Mm. And keep your lane. Mm. And I keep my lane. Praise God. And don't try... Don't try to be who you are not. Mm. Be who God made you to be. Praise God. And in the in the fullness of time, mm. if God called you, He will surely manifest Himself. Amen. But keep your lane. Mm. Do not compare yourself. Mm. Give yourself give yourself time to mature. Mm. And in the fullness of time, God will elevate you. Praise God. Now, what that's what we hear called elevate. in this elevate church. <laughs> God will elevate you. Amen. It is nothing good like when God elevates you, mm. because it does not come with strings attached. Mm. It does not come with any demands. Mm.
because the gifts of the gifts of God are without repentance. Praise God. So that's my advice to the pastors. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Encourage Your Pastor, Bishop Jackson Kingori, right here with us. God bless you, man of God. Thank you, Apostle. We'll have you another time. Amen. When you're back to Kenya. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy your time. Praise God. If you like these programs and encouraging a pastor, you can also participate in giving. There are usually numbers on the screen, and a till number you can give an offering. Let's encourage each other in the Lord and let's be supporters of the move of God. For now, good night. God bless you. We'll see you another time. Amen. Amen. Amen.